Hello and welcome back to Collection Log Completionist, the series where I attempt to fill in as many slots as I can in the Collection Log. Old School's newest raid, Tombs of a Masket, has dropped, and of course we're heading in there to try to get as many of those log slots as we can, and trust me, I will not disappoint. In this video alone, we get three purples, so strap yourself in, and I hope you enjoy. But real quick, today's video is sponsored by Mech Arena, which is a team-based PvP mobile game where your personal skill is truly the deciding factor in whether you're going to come out on top. If you're looking to play a shooter where you can actually compete to win and get recognized for it, you'll love this. One of my favorite things about the game is the absolute depth of customization that exists for setting up your mech. You've got a large selection of mechs to choose from, then you get to choose weapons to complement your playstyle or to fit the build of your mech, and finally your pilot, which can offer unique perks that help you out. It's insanely fun to test out new builds and try different playstyles to see what works best. Personally, when I play, I like to go for a more tactical approach, positioning myself in unexpected ways so I can start attacking my opponents before they even notice me. Hitting them in the back does extra damage, so if you catch someone off guard, you can take them out before they can even react and start shooting back. I also really like the kill shot mech that lets you charge insanely fast to traverse the map or slam into another mech for a massive amount of damage. Plus, this month is absolutely huge for Mech Arena. They've got their new Battle Pass season, a huge lineup of Oktoberfest events, and some amazing prizes, including their new pilot, Boar. They're also adding controller support to the game, which will make playing it even smoother. Mech Arena is growing quick and is completely free to play on Android and iOS right now, so if you use my personal link in the description, you can get yourself a free starter pack worth $25. It includes a Firelight skin, a Prodigy crate, and a Plasma Cannon 4 to help kickstart your game. Plus, if you're quick, you can add me to your friends list, and if you catch me on, shoot me an invite so we can play some games together. Thank you once again to Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. It is finally here. Tombs of a Masket is out. Everybody is here getting ready to raid. Just watch the little bit of Bodhi stream. It looks super fun. I think I'm going to run some of the entry mode, which is basically no invocations. There are a bunch of invocations which allow you to make the raid harder. Like, okay, so you can only die 10 times. You get extra raid levels up to five. So it's entry mode until you get up to 150 raid level, I believe. So I will just be doing no invocations at the start. Now let's take a peek at the collection log, see how many new items have been added. It looks like we have 18 new items, including the shrouds. So they added these capes as well. It's probably for doing like 2,000 or 2,500 tombs of a masket. A lot of insanely good items, a ton of new best in slot, plus the thread of Elidinus. Elidinus, I'm sure we're all going to argue over how that's pronounced for the next year, which makes your rune pouch hold four runes instead of three. And you can get that on entry mode. So if I just solo a couple entry modes, it's very likely that I can get that. Or some of these gems which you add to the Karis Partisan. So, without further ado, let's get started. Well, there's the first room done, and I'm really considering bringing in Ava's though, because like, look at all my Amethyst darts on the ground. I mean, geez, that's just like tens of thousands of gold wasted, and it's probably not worth it to run around picking them up. Oh my gosh, we got a big banana? What is the big banana? What? I'm really starting to think I need to bring two Staminas into here, because I'm already down to one dose, and I pre-potted a Stamina. And, uh, yeah, this puzzle room, you have to go back and forth and solve both sides by yourself in solo mode, so it's definitely, uh, a little bit strenuous. Yeah, no, you actually don't. As it turns out, I'm just dumb. And now we got a literal piece of poop, man. We got the scarab's dung. We got, we got like, actual poop. I mean, am I supposed to be picking these up, man? I don't know, but these boss fights are really, really fun so far. And, uh, of course it is entry mode. It's gonna get much harder when I go into the real modes, but I'm enjoying this. We've got a helpful spirit here. He offers some items. Oh my gosh, that is a lot of supplies. I've been being kind of stingy on my supplies because I didn't really know if you would get a resupply halfway through, but oh my, is that it? Did I do it? Is that the final fight or is there more to this? Whoa, it looks like it's getting sucked in. This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Is that it? Is there another boss fight? Oh no, I think that that is it. There we go, 45 minutes and 25 seconds for my total completion time. And now we use the teleport crystal to get into the loot room. Wow, that was super fun. That was insanely fun. I cannot wait to get into an actual group and try this. My loot chest is right here. Let's open up the loot chest and see what we get. I think if you get a unique, it goes into that sarcophagus. Obviously, I don't expect one, but we got a cache of runes, which is a collection log slot. Nice. We also got a magic seed and a blood essence. I must have gotten extremely lucky because that's... Actually, really good loot for an entry mode, 375,000 gold, and then we can drop all of the, you know, potions from in here and open up the cache of runes and see what we get. What? 3,500 soul runes? What in God's name is that? 
What? Okay. All right. Let's add all this loot together. That's one mil from doing an entry road, entry mode tombs of a masket. And I sucked. Okay. For my next one, I'm going to activate a couple invocations as you can see. So like this one makes it so you can die up to three times. Uh, I think like that. Yes. And I didn't die at all in my first one. So that shouldn't be too bad. This one sets a time limit. I don't think I'm going to go for any of those right now. This one makes it so that you get less helpful items from the spirit. That's fine. I didn't even come close to using all the supplies. And this other one makes it so food doesn't heal you, which doesn't matter. I didn't use food. I used bruise only. There is another one that makes bruise not work. So you'd have to use only food. That's really tough. But look at this. I can get the ring and the fang at a reasonable rate. That's what these highlighted items mean at just 50. So I'm not even up to normal mode, but I have a chance to get the fang and the ring, which are probably worth an insane amount of money right now. And that fang is a ridiculous ridiculously powerful weapon it looks like you have to get up to normal mode to unlock the rest of the drops having a reasonable drop rate underneath normal mode it always just says these two so i don't know if it scales depending on your raid level or if it's best to just stop right at the point where these two drops get activated and then i assume once you get into hard mode obviously the drop rate for everything goes up by a lot so i'm going to deactivate a couple of these we're going to do like a chill run with these as potential rewards okay apparently the food uh the food thing affects bruise as well so so I think this run might be uh, might be dead just a little bit. You know, I think that's just broken though, because look, increases raid level by 20 and food will no longer heal you. But then there's this one that says potions which restore health don't have any effect, increases level by 30. So I'm pretty sure they just messed it up and made bruise count as food because I, I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. It doesn't really make much sense. So this room right here is not like super hard, but oh my gosh, will it get so much easier once we get a gem for the Karis Partisan? Because this thing does insane damage against Kefri, and I think there's an upgrade for the Partisan that just makes it even more accurate and it's crazy. Also, I really like the floating poop. That is a big improvement over my first raid. I feel like I used way, so way less supplies in the fight. Let's see how many supplies I have left in here. Yeah, pretty decent amount of supplies left. And uh, it was just over 30 minutes, and I actually took a bathroom break in the middle of the raid, so not too bad in my opinion. Any purples? Of course not. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Let's see what the loot is like on this run with a little bit of higher invocations. Is it any better, or is the normal loot kind of the same? 100 dragon dart tips, uh, and 9 battle stabs and coconut milk. Not too bad, honestly. Much worse than the first one, but hey. Let's keep running. All right, I've upped the uh, raid level to 100 for this run. Like I said, don't know if it actually increases the loot until we get into normal mode, but we are inching our way towards normal mode. Wow, that went amazingly. I think I'm getting quite better at this. That was at 100, and we did a 31-minute raid, and I had an insane amount of supplies left. I think for the next run, we're going up to normal mode, baby. Two Dragon Met Helms and 10 Lilies of the Sand. Uh, are they actually untradeable? I know that they're the new Herblore ingredients, so maybe... Maybe they're worth a little bit right now. Yep, they're like 17,000 gold each right now, so that's 170k. That's a pretty good drop. I imagine over time they'll drop to being really, really cheap. Although they are super nice for Iron Man because you can actually use your dwarf weed potions now, and dwarf weeds are maybe worth farming depending on how many of these you get over the course of going for all the toa items okay i think it's time to attempt a normal mode run just for anyone who's curious here are my invocations uh, i'm keeping the three deaths one because i don't know if the bosses get like harder they get more health and hit harder depending on your raid level or if it's strictly just the modifiers i don't really know 40 minute run three deaths and then just a couple of the extra ones we'll see how it goes uh if i die you know or i find it too hard we can switch them around no are you kidding me i walked into both of them oh man does that start the whole warden fight over because if so i had just do not have enough supplies oh. okay this time i am doing way better look at all the supplies jeez dude that was so intense oh my gosh dude I can't even imagine what soloing challenge mode is like. I did have a decent amount of leftover supplies, but not that much. And uh, we did clear it in under the 40 minute timer, but there we go. Oh my goodness, there we go. 35 minute solo in normal mode, pretty good. Did we get anything? No special loot, but apparently you can get the jewels from the normal chests and you can get the pet from the normal chest and elite clues. So let's see, did we get anything? Uh, we, we, we got a jewel. We got sapphires. So I got a little bit of tips on some gear. The rapier is absolutely amazing in this raid. Also dragon claws. And look at that PB. 30 minutes, 47. Nearly a sub 30 solo. And oh, we got a purple. <gasps> no, we actually got a purple. Oh my God. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm really excited. I don't know if I've seen anyone else do a solo purple. So this is a momentous occasion. 
Let's look at the animation. Let's go. What could it be? I'm, I'm honestly cool with anything. I literally do not care what I get. Masori would be awesome. Fang would be cool too, I suppose. What are we going to get? Oh, it's the Elidinus Ward. Oh my god, I have not seen that one yet. Oh, look at that collection log slot. <laughs> yes, let's go. Oh, that's the new best in slot mage shield when you combine that with the uh, arcane, I think. I wonder how much this thing is worth right now. At least 10 mil. It's worth at least 10 mil. All right, let's see what the ward looks like. We don't have an... Well, I do have an arcane to throw on there, to be honest, but I don't know if it'll uh, if it'll sell for more with the arcane or if it's even worth doing on day one. Probably not. Uh, but yeah, check that out. It looks... It kind of looks like a little clay figure. You know, Do you guys ever see those claymations back in the day? All right, I tried to sell this thing on the GE for like... 10 minutes so we're gonna sell it to good friend of the youtube channel mulish is here for 400 million gold that's pretty nice that is a pretty nice amount of money if he accepts we'll see if he accepts he might be he might be thinking we're poor youtube for tax evasion all right he's about to make the ward and attach it with the uh arcane sigil oh there we go wow it's the rune crafting animation no way all right let's see it throw it on baby that looks really cool with the sigil on honestly it looked kind of stupid without it on but that is pretty sick looking that is beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Look, we just got another collection log slot and the item that I really, really wanted. The Thread of Elodinus. So we've got Elodinus's ward. We've got Elodinus's thread. I'm pretty sure we've got all that Elodinus, Elodinus, whatever, you know, has to offer here in the raid. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go attach this to the rune pouch. I don't know if we need to uh, take all our runes out or what. All right, all the runes are out of the pouch, and well, I guess we can inspect it. Wow, it looks like it could be used to augment a rune pouch. No way. Uh, what? You need a needle? Oh, this game just loves it. They just love their lore and making sense and stuff. You're attempting to bind them. It's reversible at any time. I don't know why you'd want to reverse it. Is there any reason you would want to reverse this? I mean, you just get to have four runes in the rune pouch, so let's throw them all in there. Oh, this is going to be so amazing. Watch this. And now I can put, uh, what am I missing here? Soul runes so that I can cast Blood Barrage and Ice Barrage at the same time. And Rune Light already has a plug-in for it. That looks so good. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, my gosh. This is honestly a massive upgrade. And apparently it is super common. Most people were getting theirs within, like, the first three raids. So I guess me getting up to six without it. I was just so dry. And now the best part, get rid of that stinky rune pouch and put in the divine rune pouch. Oh yeah. There's a first, an elite clue. I got, oh, that is dirty. Oh my gosh. Imagine you're an Iron Man. You just do a quick little 30 minute TOA for eight Renar seeds and 10 Toad Flax. All right, so I have added a few more invocations here and we're up to raid level 200. We'll see if I can pull this off because these are the supplies I ended with on my last raid. I genuinely used I think like one brew and two restores and the rest was just the normal supplies so I figure I can add a few more invocations and it'll go well and a lot of people in my chat are saying that I can add a couple more but I think we're gonna take it slow I don't want to I don't want to run straight into it and get myself killed oh my god look at that time 39 59 and I had the sub 40 second uh timer on that is our first 200 <laughs> Or, yeah, 200 raid level completion. Sub 40 is easy, you guys. You got to be a total noob not to get sub 40. It was so easy. All right. Do we get a purple for our first? No, we don't. But that's okay. What do we get in the chest? Come on. A gem, please. A gem. Pretty, pretty, please. Four, Four D meds and a magic seed. All right. I'll take it. And there's our 10th normal mode, Tombs of a Mascot. I just did that one at 205. And uh, we had a decent amount of supplies left over. So. I think maybe a couple more practice runs at 205 and we'll start moving up maybe towards 250. We're inching towards hard mode, but probably not going to be able to do that without a few more gear upgrades. Yeah, I think I'm getting a little bit better at the raid and a little more confident. I just finished a 230 raid level with all of these supplies left. I seriously had seven brews and one and no, sorry, two full ambrosia potions. And if you don't know what these do, they literally fully heal you and fully restore your prayers. So... I think it's time to move up our raid level and also, did we get a purple? Did we get a purple? No. Okay, so I don't think I'm actually going to be able to do this. I think if I want to be able to do expert mode, I probably want to get myself a fang, which is currently going for like 500 mil, so I don't have enough for that. But we're going to try it anyways. Here are the invocations I've turned on. We are going for it. We have exactly 300 points. I just finished that 235 with an insane amount of supplies, so I'm feeling confident. And we're going to go for it. I'll probably die really early. But if I somehow manage to pull this off, let's see how many expert mode runs have been completed. Only 24 runs 
in the entire world so far, and only 3,000 attempts, so not even a lot of people have gone for it. Now, I respect everybody who's pulled this off, and I would love to join them. Okay, I need to find a new invocation, because this one right here, Akka's range, the magic attacks also do melee damage to anyone next to him, is way too hard for 10 raid levels. It's insane that this only gives 10, because that melee attack he does can hit like 30-something on you, so I, I just feel like this one is horribly not worth it. Maybe if you're playing in a team, it's worth it, but for solos, my god, that's one of the hardest uh, uh, invocations in the whole game. Oh, finally, at 17 kill count, we finally got our first jewel. I think this is the worst one. I've been told the red one and the blue one are really good. I don't even know what the gold one does, but yes, I am very happy to get that. We can throw that on the Karis Partisan, and it gives it some kind of upgrade. I, I don't even know. It's going to look pretty... With the, yeah, there we go. Attach Jewel of the Sun. Oh, it looks it is yellow now. And there is 20 kill count, and that was a 250 raid. Pretty solid, and uh, 10 Toad Flax Seeds would be amazing if I was an Iron. But as a main, that is worth nothing. Oh, so a few raids ago, I got the Eye of the Corruptor Gem for the Karis, the Red Gem. And I made a nice clip out of it, and I had some beautiful commentary, and it was very nice, and it informed you all that it was a collection log slot. And I didn't, I didn't hit start recording. I was just sitting in my room, talking to myself about this red gem that I got in RuneScape. But yeah, only one gem to go, the Breach of the Scare, which unfortunately is the best one, and the one you actually want to use when soloing TOA. And also will make the Karis Partisan a very good weapon at Cal Fight Queen, so I'm really excited to get this one. I got all the other ones first, but that's just how it goes sometimes. I've seen some interesting information. Basically, some people are saying that raiding at raid level 150 is the most efficient way to make money and to get purples. Which is really unfortunate, I thought it would be better to be on a higher, but apparently it's not. So I'm going to be turning my raid level down to about 150, maybe a little bit higher, whatever, just to plow through kill count and see if that can get us a purple faster. This is based on information that's been like crowdsourced in a Discord, a ton of people putting all their loot and all their kill counts in over the first few days of the raid. Of course, this might be slightly inaccurate, but also I think it's worth it to be able to do these raids as quickly as possible because, if you noticed, in the TOA log, there is the capes, just like chain and just like TOB. This cape right here is probably going to be 2,000 or 2,500 Tombs of a Masket completions. So the faster I can plow through these, the better, especially because I'm assuming along the way to 2,500 completions, I'll probably get at least one of every drop. And if I don't, then I guess we'll cross that road when we get there. Uh, yeah, wow. Doing this in 150 is so much faster. This is going to be a sub 25. And I, I took two minutes off to text my wife back about something. So yeah, not bad at all. I think I'm going to be doing a ton of runs at 150. Now, of course, I assume the purple rate is slightly lower on here. And I've still only seen one purple in the 29 that we've done. But yeah, let's see the GP. Come on. Is it decent? We got, uh, you know, 162k. That's, that's That seems about right. Just running some TOA. Surprise, surprise. TOA running with Dave. Thank God I have my desktop audio muted because he just screamed to high heavens and scared me. But there's 50 kill count. Only one purple in my name. No purples in his name. He actually has more kill count than me. And uh, yeah, so somebody please, if you if you have any spare luck, you can just send it our way. That'd be great. Oh my gosh. I just got an amazing time. 2238. And we got our second purple. Yes, this is so good. Uh, apparently the rates have been looked at and it's approximately a 1 in 45 for a deathless solo purple around 150 to 170. So this is kind of lucky. Let's open it. Let's see what it is. I'll be happy with anything that's not a dupe. I'll even be happy with the ring. But if I get the staff, I will scream like a little girl because that thing is just so good and will improve my solo run so much. What did we get? <laughs> dude, I... <laughs> I want to cry, dude. All... <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go in the clan chat and everyone's gonna say grats, but I'm just gonna sit here and just I'm just gonna loathe in my own suffering. This thing is not worth that much. Uh, I think it's crashed a lot recently. It's like maybe maybe 60 mil Maybe okie dokie the ward sold for how many coins did we get? We got 57.9 million coins, so it's still a pretty penny of course. It's just oh man what could have been could have been the Fang, which is several hundred mil. Could have been Masori Piece, which is like half a bill if you get the top, I believe. 
Ah, oh, the staff. But it's okay. We're not going to sit here and complain. Our log has two items in it, which is pretty cool. And I think before I take a break from Tombs of a Musket, a Masket, Amascut, I don't know how it's pronounced, I'm going to get to 100kc because I believe that's what you need for the first cape. So we can at least get that collection log slot before we move on to other places. So my average times that I'm getting, though, while running this is like 25 minutes or so. So I'm probably getting just about two completions an hour. So we're talking over 20 more hours of this content, baby. Let's get it started. Well, it's happened. Jagex has nerfed everything about this raid. It's harder to do now. You get less supplies in it. The drop rate is allegedly about the same at lower invocations, like I get 150 on normal, but higher, much higher at the higher invocation. So it's maybe worth doing as high of an invocation as you can. So I just did a run at 165, which is what I've been doing them on normally, and my time was 2554, which is about three or four minutes slower than I usually do these runs because they did buff a few things in the raid. They nerfed a few items and uh, it's still not bad. That's still really fast. I can still do about two solos an hour, which is pretty much what I could do before. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll keep going. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way to 100 right now, but you know, we'll see. To be honest, at higher invocations, at least in solo, some of the rooms like Kefri and Baba feel really rough with the rapier, so I think I'm going to splurge and go ahead and buy an Osmumpton's Fang. It bought for, bought for 363 mil, and this weapon right here is pretty nutty. So compared to the rapier, rapier we've got 161 stab bonus. This one has... it. Did it equip? Will it? Equip? Will it? Any, any day now? Can I not equip this? Is the server lagging? Ah, it's probably just the servers. They've been completely broken this week. All right, 161 on the Rapier and 172 on the Fang, which doesn't seem like much, except this thing rolls for accuracy twice. So you could pretty much assume you're going to hit every single time. And with the Rapier, we've got 148 melee strength. This bad boy's got 162. So it's got a couple max hits up on it. Plus, it has a unique mechanic where it will only hit between 15% and 85% of its max hit. So on average, you'll hit higher. On average, you'll be hitting almost every single hit. And it is literally impossible to roll a zero when you hit an enemy with this so this weapon is pretty insane and uh it kind of yes it kind of looks like a squiggly adamant uh long sword but i think it looks pretty neat and i'm ready to stab some stuff with it okay so i'm doing a 215 run with the fang and my first impressions are that it kind of wasn't that good that room it took three whole minutes to get through baba so i mean it probably requires further testing that could have just been a nice bout of bad luck now i know there's a lot of you typing comments wow dude the fang is amazing you're just bad at the game and while yes you are correct i am very bad at this game the fang was actually bugged back then so it was way more likely to hit the lowest possible hit with it than it was to hit any other hit so it was really bad for a little while there once they patched that it, it is now an amazing weapon oh baby no way i decided to do some 250s instead of just the lower runs and we got ourselves a purple please just don't be the ward i don't care what else it is just don't be the ward again if i get the ward three times in a row we're actually just gonna end the video right here i'm not joking please just don't be the ward and we get dude are you fucking